Most High is planting a garden in the midst of a dry land, a land that's void of life, void of wisdom, a land that's void of living waters. The Most High is building, planting his garden. Why you think he's called our husband? Husband means planter. <coughs> so the Most High is planting the seed of Jacob back on the earth again. That's why he's called our, our husband, which means a planter. The Garden of Eden, or Idan, is being planted starting with the elect, the righteous seed, the righteous branch is being planted on the earth today. And the branches are springing upward and outward. So this truth is spreading throughout the earth. The trees of righteousness are being planted and the new kingdom, the, the kingdom of heaven is in his elect that are beginning to take or to plant root, standing up boldly. <coughs> Righteous trees standing up boldly that have been deeply planted into the word of truth. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of great wisdom. Behold, an oasis in the desert. So the seed of the righteous is being planted on the earth and being watered by the fountains of life, this wisdom, this truth. Our roots are being, <laughs> are being established because the seed of this wisdom has been sown into our mind. Let's go to Ezekiel 37. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse one. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit. <coughs> verse 1. Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. So these bones represent the Israelites in a dry state, void of wisdom, void of the fountain of knowledge, walking dead. The so-called Negroes, Native Americans and Latinos that were cut off from this knowledge. Ezekiel 37, verse 2, then calls me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry the valley of the shadow of death the Lord of Babylon cut off from our nationality our heritage sent to a distant land to serve our enemies in a land that our forefathers knew not. A 
Ezekiel 37, verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. So Yahweh says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he's also the fountains of living water. Let's go to John. John 14, <coughs> verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we, we know the way? John 14 and 6. Let's read that again. John 14, verse 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Yahweh shall I say it unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. See, the life of the dry bones are going to be sprung to life through the word, the word made flesh. He is also the fountains of living waters. Let's go to John. Four. The book of John, chapter four. Let's go to verse 13. how <laughs> was I speaking to the woman at the well? John four, verse 13. Yahweh answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Us. This is mineral water, vitamin water, the fountains of youth, the fountains of everlasting life. That's how the dry bones are being replenished, coming back to life. Let's read it again. A word. John 4, verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. For well, the word is our life source. <coughs> the word is our life source. Mineral water, vitamin water, a holy spiritual tonic. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to John 7 and 38. <laughs> Book of John, chapter 7. Let's go to verse 30, 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahweh stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the scriptures have said, he is a dark skinned man with woolly hair. The scriptures have said, he is the son of the most high that walked the earth in the flesh. The scripture has said, He is the only begotten Son of the Most High, the way, the truth, the life, the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, the first spirit created. Let's go back to Ezekiel. But now we know that the way to come to life is drinking from the fountains of this truth. 
Ezekiel 37, verse 4. Go back to verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Say what? Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live for the breath of life is being whispered unto us in the land of our captivities, in the dry land where we've been scattered into all nations, the lands of our enemies, where we went to serve, the lands of drawing water, the breath of life from the Most High is whispering unto us in the wilderness. Ezekiel 37, verse 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So we know our nationality, our heritage. We know that we come from a lineage of kings and priests, a holy people, a royal bloodline. We know now that we are the 12 tribes of Israel that were scattered into all nations to serve our captivity for the common boy. <laughs> for the visit the common boy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let this load. Shall on below. Rock the thumb. For the GMS Saints of the Most High. Surat 21, verse 13. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood, and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. Beautiful. So this counsel of the table of the Lord comes with fine wine, fine dining comes with the bread of life and the wine of wisdom and comes with the fountains of everlasting living waters. This is the table of the king, the king's table in his courtship. We're supping with him, supping with the Lord. He is sharing his innermost secrets with his counsel, his elect, for the spirit of truth is circulating throughout his elect a small sanctuary let's read that again for the gms saints of the most high Sirach 21 verse 13 the knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life the valley of the dry bones are being nourished bone marrow is being replenished. The flesh is coming back on us. We know who we are now. We have the breath of life and are beginning to stand on our feet, exceeding and great, shining the glory of the countenance of the Lord through wisdom. And all nations are beginning to see the light in the valley of the shadow of death. Brother GMS Spiritual Temple Shalom, Barack Adam, Brother Gabar Adam, Revelations 11, verse 11. 
and after three days and a half, a spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So in this garden of the Lord that's bringing forth, it's beginning to spring forth fountains of water, this knowledge, a garden or an oasis that's being built in a land of gross darkness, a land of dryness, a dry place in the wilderness. We're seeing a garden beginning to spring forth. The elect of the house of Israel are being planted and are standing up with great boldness in the land of our captivities under the shadow of the heathen. So this is a monumental event, a monumental event. All nations are seeing the light. All nations are seeing the work of the Lord. He is working a work which we would not have believed. Coming back to our identity, coming back to the word of promise and the covenant with the living power. Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. A marvelous work is being performed in our days. Brother Gabar Dama, Revelations 11, verse 11. <laughs> and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. While well, the other nations are consumed with fear, are moving in haste to establish a global reset, to establish an international lockdown. The sons of Jacob are planted and are beginning to bud and blossom. The sons of Jacob are beginning to sprout out and upward as trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord, the garden of the Lord, is beginning to spring up and out. <laughs> Let's go. Brother Zadok, Brother Zadok, Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Are seeing our light. They're seeing us come up out of nothing, out of the ghettos and barrios, out of the hoods. We were called hood rats. We were called nothing. We were called castaways. So this is a marvelous work. We were called thugs, thugs. We were called everything but the sons of the living power. So they're seeing something of greatness come out of nothing, out of the dust of the earth, out of the dry place, out of the graves. They're springing forth something that looks spectacular and astonishment unto the nations. Those that were slaves are being cultivated, nourished, and raised up as trees. Only the, only the power of the Lord can do such a marvelous work. It must be Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai. It must be a sign and a wonder in the land of our enemies. Who would have thought those that were beat down, afflicted, written off? Told that we were nothing, Gentiles. Told that we were forsaken and cast away. Brother Gabar Jab, Wisdom of Solomon 5, verse 1. Then 
Tell the righteous men, stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. For the labors of the sons of Jacob built Babylon, built America. The labors of the children of Israel fought in the wars of America, built the walls of Babylon. nation on earth. They, the children of Israel made Egypt great. The children of Israel built friends and hit them, built the pyramids, built the mighty military of ancient Egypt, made Pharaoh a great man through the children of Israel and the spirit of the Lord. And now that same spirit is raising us up from a dead state, raising us up from a dry place, raising us up from a land of death, a wilderness. Who would have thought that a marvelous work would be work in our days that we would not believe? But through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, all things are possible, renewed and made new. Brother Gabar Adama, Psalms 104, verse 5. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever? Thou covers it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke, they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys into the place which thou hast found it for them. So everything moves at his command. Everything is spoken into existence by the word. The Most High controls all the elements that we see, the air we breathe, the breath of life, knowledge and wisdom. He controls any and everything most high, all things are possible. You gotta believe it's not life such a grand masterpiece. Only once we ascertain that we possess the power to mold, shape, alter, and realize the course of reality through the imagination of our faith. So we gotta believe what we can conceive we can achieve through faith. The material world is subject under the spiritual realm. A spiritual decree has gone forth saying it's time, it's time. Breathe breath unto these dry bones and they shall live. Psalms 104 <coughs> verse nine. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. So everything is set in its rightful place and set in order, built and stacked upon an orderly arrangement. The Most High is perfect and all his works are in perfection. So everything is set up in place by measure of time, space, and age or eon. The Most High is the great master chess player, the Grand Master, and has delegated that authority down to Yahweh Shai. So we serve a perfectionist. Let's go here. Shalom, brother. How are you? How are you? Oh, we got to get back into this oasis. So everything is subject unto Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. The rain fall, the floods, the sunshine, the cloud cover, the air we breathe, the mountains, the rivers, 
the valleys. Everything fell at his command. Every creepy, crawling thing, every slithering thing, the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, the sea mammals, is all subject to the power of Yahweh, by ship Yahweh But what happens when he commands the valley of the dry bones to come forth and come up hither? He's speaking a command. Lazarus, come forth. Well, Jacob dwell in the valley of the dead. We made our bed in hell, in the land of our captivity. He's speaking to us through his word. He's saying, Jacob, come forth. Arise from the grave. Arise from the dead. And eventually come up hither. The chariots of the Lord are pre-staged, pre-set, and prepared to take up the elect. Let's go. Let's go. Brother Leroy Walker, Wisdom of Solomon, five and four. We fools accounted for his life, madness, and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God, and his lot is among the saints? We thought they were nothing. We thought they were ghetto rats, ghetto boys. We called them thugs. We called them Gentiles. We called them three-fifths of a man. We made them first fire, last hired. How is he being caught up into the clouds of the air to meet Yahweh Shai and the so-called UFO fleet? How is he? being joined unto the king's caravan, a fleet. I was he numbered among the saints. Let's go. Let's go back to Ezekiel 37. So what part may post that in Deuteronomy 32? This doctrine shall drop as the rain it's in Deuteronomy 32, Ezekiel 37, verse 6. Let's go back to 5. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, prophesy the fountains of waters. Verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. The 60s, the Civil Rights Movement, the Green Berets, I mean the uh, Brown Berets, Issachar, the uh, so-called Black Panthers, the, um, the Young Lords, Ephraim, Young Lords, Issachar, the Brown Berets, and the so-called Negroes, Judah, the Black Panthers. So these nations of Israel were coming together under the charge of Judah, which led the charge. But we did not have the full truth at that time. So the so-called Civil Rights Movement Unto me, prophesy unto the wind 
prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Okay? Millions of Israelites were waking up. They're trying to chart it. Saying 13 million Israelites have waken up. But I believe that number is at least double. At least double. Number four represents grace and mercy. There may be 40 million, but of that 40 million, only a third is the elect, or 30 million. A third is the elect. So you can't count or measure or number Israel. Israel is as the sand of the sea. So it's up to the most high. I believe it's more than what they're reporting. 13 million Israelites waking up. I believe it's more because the Bible says that we are as the sand of the sea, a nation that cannot be measured nor numbered. The children of Israel as the stars of heaven. Well, this truth is dropping upon the valley of the shadow of death the valley of the dry bones. This truth is raining upon the earth as they do from heaven. This doctrine is coming upon the earth and springing forth life. Brother Leroy Walker, Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine, my what? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender earth, and as the showers upon the grass. This doctrine is a dew from heaven. This doctrine is as the rains that shower the earth that feeds the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field that causes the herbs to get nourished and the grass of the earth to begin to spring to life. This bird leads to life. Brother Leroy Walker, Deuteronomy 32, verse one. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth, my doctrine will as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender earth, and as the showers upon the grass. For coming to life, great fear is falling upon them that see us. So-called Negroes, Native Americans and Latinos are beginning to get nourished, cultivated, groomed, Develop and springing forth as an exceeding great army. Children of Israel are springing to life. Brother GMS, Saints of the Most High, Joel 3, verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where he has sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Why you think they're spending $18 million on average to build underground doomsday bunkers, nuclear bug out bunkers, mansions underground, great fear fell upon them and saw them. They saw them. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. And he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And Jeremiah 30, verse 16. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured.
devoured, and all my adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. For they're afraid of the garden of the Lord. I done 2.0. Eden 2.0 is being built. Most high is planting the heavens on earth, and a garden is being cultivated. A garden is being watered. A garden is being brought back to life in the valley of the dead, in the valley of the dry bones. Let's read that again. Brother GMS, Saints of the Most High, Joel 3, verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whether ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. Beautiful. They're going to go down to the pit. They're going to go down to the grave. That's in Job 21, towards the bottom. They're going to go to the valley of the dry bones, the enemies of Israel. All they that devoured us are going to be devoured. All our adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. But the children of Israel shall spring forth as branches and trees of everlasting glory, as trees of righteousness. The children of Israel is going to spring forth as the grass or as the, the figs on the fig trees. Life is being brought back to existence through the sons of Jacob in a dead place, in a dry place. Who would have thought a garden can be planted, cultivated and nourished, an oasis of fountains of life springing forth in the middle of nowhere? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Go to Proverbs, Proverbs 5 and 18. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Woo! Daughter of Zion is being brought back into grace. Israel, captive daughter of Zion, is being healed, healed by the fountains of this word, the fountains of immortality. The daughter of Zion is being brought back to life. Proverbs, Proverbs 5 and 18. Let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Israel is a blessed chosen seed. The so-called Negroes Native Americans and Latinos. Now we have access back to this doctrine that's dropping as the rain, that's sprinkling upon the earth, being taught throughout all the earth. Let's go to Revelations. Revelations 22 and 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come and let him that heareth come and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Can these bones live? He that is thirsty, let him come and drink from the fountains of life. The mineral water is available. This tonic, this healing, healing waters are coming down upon the elect of Israel. The elect is thirsty. The elect is coming to this fountain of wisdom. Let's read it again. Revelation 22, verse 17. And the Spirit in the right say, Come, and let him that hear him say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely that's how the bones are being 
replenish. I'll be in water. Remember when Moses split the rock. Waters gushed out. Waters gushed out in a dry desert. In a land of death. When Moses took the staff and split the rock. The children of Israel were saved. Unto you, the word 
is pure power. The word is powerful. Being dipped in a powerful tonic water. Full of minerals, nourishment, and healing. Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So John the Baptist paved the way for Yahweh Shai. That's baptizing us with doctrinal wisdom, words of fire, and a fountain of youth. Gotta have the spirit to come out here and stand boldly in the face of those that have afflicted us. Gotta have a furnace of fire burning on the inside that must come out. It's too hot to hold. Brother Bakiyar, Yasharala, Surah 19 and 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtain his love. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. These are the vessels that we're seeing begin to bud and blossom. The elect, which starts with being watered with wisdom and truth. This is a marvelous work. For the basic, for the basic wisdom. Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Why is the Lord good? He is the honey. He is the bread of life. Why wisdom and truth in the fountains of spiritual waters that leads to immortality. Well, this doctrine is a heavenly, magical, powerful doctrine. It's bigger than what we can imagine. It leads to greatness that we never was able to conceive. It leads to a kingdom. It leads to an eternal throne of glory. It leads to a tabernacle being built on an everlasting foundation. It leads to a glorious kingdom that will never fade away, will never fail, because this word is pure, temperate mortar that will not fade away. So that same temperate mortar is making us hardened and building us to become everlasting creatures, making us hard, making us tried and tested to withstand time. We're not going to be affected by time, age, sickness, death, tears, sorrow. We're being made new and we're going to shine as the gold has been purged, purified in the fire. Let's go. Let's go. Brother Leroy Walker. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? Oh, this is a this is a baptism that can never be reversed. The words of this truth reverses the aging effects words of this doctrine is anti-aging, anti-death. The mineral oil is making us get sprinkled with life. We gotta get deep in this truth, this knowledge. Imagine being dipped in liquid gold. 
that takes out all our impurities. When we come out, we are not the same anymore. We walk different. We talk different. We think different. Oh my goodness. Brother Leroy Walker, Ezekiel 36, verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony part out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh made perfect. This is a spiritual cleansing. Nothing beats a spiritual cleansing. It's going to be made perfect. Oh, never sin again. Never go off again. Never die again. Never commit idolatry again. Never commit adultery again. Well, the spiritual cleansing is designed to be a fail-safe, faultless, making us perfect, the image of the Most High that cannot die, the image of Yahweh Shai that is risen to glory. We're going to be made in His likeness. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. For the GMS Spiritual Art, 144, Wisdom of Solomon, 3, verse 5. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. Nobody's going to forsaken gold that's been purged, made to shine and glisten. You can't just walk by gold that's been perfected in the fiery furnace and the impurities purged out. Perfection at its finest. Elect of the house of Israel. The tabernacle of David is being raised up. Lord and 
shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. And the garments of sackcloth and mourning are going to be cast off in the chains of mental, physical, and spiritual slavery are being broken. The bonds of bondage is being loose because the truth sets us free, which starts with a spiritual release. Of. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> Go back to the comment board. Oh, it's too much. Brother GMS, Saints of the Most High. Psalms 46 and 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear. In thunder, he burneth the chariots in the fire. So the United Nations militaries are going to be cut asunder, broken, and cast down to the ground. He's going to help usher in Armageddon, which means mountain of troops, the third world's war. That's how he's going to break the scepter of the ruler of the king of Babylon, Edom. Brother, GMS saints of the most high. Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am the most high. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Say lie. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Creator of all the ends of the earth that stretched the curtains of heavens and laid the foundations of the world. Who are we to fear other than Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the great Creator of creation, the King of Kings? Heaven is His throne and the earth is His footstool. Who are we to fear a man that shall die and wither away as the grass? Fear him that created man, that stretched forth the heavens and the earth, that built the foundations of the pillars of the world. Let's go, the great architect of the universe. Let's go. go here. Well, this place is going to become a desolate wilderness. Edom. <coughs> it's literally going to become a wasteland, a dry land, a desert from the massive destruction. It's going to be broken down. The city of confusion is going to be broken down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh going to break the chariots and bend or break the bow. The spear and the sword are going to be cut asunder and the mighty man is going to be brought low to their militaries. Let's go here. Let's go to the book of Book of Isaiah 58, Isaiah 58 and 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. So when a place that's being broken down, a garden is being built, a paradise, Eden or Idon. He is planting the heavens on earth. 
through Jacob, a righteous seed, a righteous branch is going to be nourished and are going to sprout out. Go to Proverbs 18 and 4. The book of Proverbs 18, verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook, an oasis in a dry land, a place of gross ignorance, a place of wickedness, the shadow of the valley, or the valley of the shadow of death. Knowledge is springing forth, water spring forth, life. That's what we're seeing. Israel is waking up in the tabernacle of David is being raised up out of the dry land, out of the dust of the earth. Proverbs 18, verse 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters and a wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Let's go to 2nd Edges 6 and 27. So these, this word drowns out lies. Word floods out a refuge of lies. Somebody post that please in Isaiah 28. The word drowns out deception. Second after 6 and 27. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith it shall flourish Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. The truth is being declared, which is sweeping away the refuge of lies. Go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 15 because he has said we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through it shall not come unto us for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hid ourselves we grew up in false doctrine, idolatry, misinformation. We grew up thinking we were Gentiles, nothing. We grew up worshiping the gods of the other nations. We grew up following the ways of the heathen and Gentiles. We grew up following the ways of the other nations. Let's go to verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So the foundations are the pillars of wisdom is being established on our rock, Yahushai, the word. Let's go to verse 17. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet and the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Evil is being put out and deceit quenched and the elect the elect are being replenished sustained strengthened second after six and twenty seven for evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith it shall flourish corruption shall be overcome and the truth which have been 
so long without fruit shall be declared. Time to rise up. A garden is being planted. A word is on the earth. The doctrine is raining down. Let's go to Isaiah 41, verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 17. When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. So he that is thirsty, let him come and drink from the fountains of truth, the waters of wisdom. Isaiah 41 and 18, I will open rivers and high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. Only the most high can make a place of the sea, death, deception, into a fountain or spring or an oasis. He can create life in the midst of death. He can make a way out of no way and build a highway in the midst of a of a wasteland. A highway is being built out of no way. Grab my water. My voice is dry. When we read that, talking about the poor and needy. The Israelites are the poor. We're poor because we're under affliction. This is not our rest. But we have this treasure of wisdom and knowledge. So we have a heavenly treasure which starts with this doctrine. But right now, we're in a place that's not our rest. Let's read this again. Isaiah. 41 or 17 when the poor and needy seek water and there is none and their tongue faileth for thirst I the Lord will hear them I the God of Israel will not forsake them I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water well, what do we call these youtube stations channels channels of water that spring it forth so we're being fed by channels of water youtube channels isaiah 41 verse 19 i will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shittah tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, and the pine, and the box tree together. That's right, live streams, live streams. Beautiful, thank you, brother. So this is evergreens being created. Trees of righteousness are flourishing. If you've ever looked at a cedar tree built by a stream of water, it's very plush, dark green. It has a thick root 
and its roots have been deeply grounded into the earth underneath that are absorbing the waters of the nearby river or the adjacent creek or live stream. That's how the Most High is poetically describing his elect, planted by a living river of water. The Most High is very poetic. Let's get ready to close out. Shalom, beloved. Rock a thumb. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 44, verse 1. Yet now, hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Isaiah 44 and 2. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou. Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the drying ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. For we're passing down this wealth of knowledge and these streams of wisdom to our offspring. This word will not depart out of our mouth, nor out of the mouth of our seed, nor out of the mouth of our seed, seed, saith the God of Jacob. So these are everlasting channels or live streams, because he hath poured his spirit upon Jacob. His tabernacle is built upon his monument, Zion. His memorial. <coughs> Isaiah 44, verse 3. For well, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. This is beautiful. So imagine this. He's rebuilding the Garden of Eden. Paradise. Idon. See that? That's what he's doing. He's rebuilding a kingdom. A paradise. The Garden of Eden. Or Idon. It's being rebuilt. Isaiah 44 and 4. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. <coughs> the garden is being rebuilt, cultivated, nourished, managed. The husband has planted. That husband is the father. Through his husband men, Yahushai, husband means to plant. So our Heavenly Father is called the husband. Let's go to Psalms 19 and 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So whenever you look at a garden, you see water being sprayed on it. You see the springs of water constantly dripping on the fruits and the vegetables which are similitudes or a metaphor for his elect. You see the grapes looking very healthy, real juicy, plump, plush. You see the greenery is very lush. The springs of the water is constantly feeding the garden. We gotta envision this. So everything looks perfect, well nourished. Brother Ernest L, Genesis 50 and 21. Now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. 
So the word is a comforter. That's what's comforting us. Prophetic wisdom. Let's close out. We're going to close out here. Surat 24. The book of Surat. Chapter 24. Verse 25. He filled all things with his wisdom as for sun and as tigress in the time of the new fruits. See? Just like in the ancient garden that the Most High built in the old world. Surah 24 and 26. He maketh the understanding to abound like Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of the harvest. And we're reading about the Tigris and the Euphrates. The same rivers that watered the ancient garden of paradise. Sirach 24 and 27. He maketh the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light and as again in the time of vintage. His vintage grapes, the seed of the elect, are being produced. Are being fattened up, made lush with wisdom. Sirach 24 and 28. The first man knew not. Sirach 24 and 28. The first man knew her not perfectly. No more shall the last find her out. And that first man is Adam. So Adam was breathed the breath of life. But Adam is going to be perfect when he comes back as Yahawashai. So he's going to have the full power, strength, and wisdom in his perfection and glory. So he's coming back as Yahawashai. Made perfect. Zerah 24 and 28. The first man knew her not perfectly. No more shall the last find her out. For her thoughts are more than the sea, and her counsels profounder than the deep. I also came out as a brook from a river, and as a conduit into a garden. So this new garden is going to be made everlasting that he's preparing. We're seeing the fruits of his labors that the husband has planted and watered, starting with the apostles and elders, followed by the subsequent, the subsequent teachers and elders, and the younger teachers and prophets that sprung up after them. Sirach 24 and 31. I said, I will water my best garden and will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river and my river became a sea. Spreading, covering the vast landmass. So this truth starts to build into a overflowing scourge or flood of wisdom covering the sea from sea to shining sea and covering the geographical boundaries of the earth. So this new kingdom is going to be vast which is starting as a small garden but is going to blossom into the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Sirach. <coughs> Sirach 24 and 31. The best garden starts with his elect. His elect is his best. Sirach 24 and 31. I say it. I will water my best garden 
and will water abundantly my garden bed. And lo, my brook became a river, and my river became a sea. I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning, and will send forth her light afar off, stretching the boundaries and building a vast kingdom. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever, an eternal kingdom of excellency and of life. So Jacob is going to be immortal and have received the spirit of immortality, which starts with this wisdom, a pure doctrinal wisdom. Sirach 24 and 32, I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning and will send forth her light afar off. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Beautiful. Well, the kingdom of Jacob represents life and the kingdom under Edom represents death and is on a tenuous timeline which means it's going to die out or run out but the kingdom of Jacob is going to be on a continuum eternal continuum never ending everlasting infinity or a continuous spectrum of life everlasting the bible says in second address six and nine esau is the end of the world jacob is the beginning of it that follow see so death is going to be swallowed up in victory and life is springing forth the kingdom under jacob eternity which represents life through yahweh shai death is conquered swallowed up in victory through our Lord and Savior. Brother GMS Spiritual Art, Surat 1 and 19. Surat 1 and 19. Yep. Wisdom reign of down skill and knowledge. Oh, but <laughs> I'm choking bad. Surat. Surat 1 and 19. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. Beautiful. So obtaining the glorious kingdom is honor and the kingdom is built on the pillars of wisdom. Brother GMS Spiritual Art 144 Sirach 1 and 20 The root of wisdom is to fear the Lord and the branches thereof are long life the branches of Jacob is springing forth trees of righteousness immortals cedars that have been planted deeply rooted by the everlasting rivers the fear of the Lord <coughs> Sirach 1 and 21 the fear of the Lord driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. So that death is a sickness. Excuse me. Sin. Sin is a sickness, a virus, which leads to death. So sin is going to be conquered through the spirit of the Most High through the pure doctrine. Brother David Israel, biblical Jew. Proverbs, <coughs> David Israel, biblical Jew. Proverbs 30 and five. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So purity is 
does not expire. No shelf life does not die. Built to last, durable, eternal, everlasting. This doctrine is being planted into our bodies, which is leading to immortality because of the purity of it and the power of the word. So we'll go ahead and close out there. My voice is dried out. Yep, let's go ahead and get that one. Brother Ernest L. Isaiah 25 and 8. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. No more sorrow. No more pain, no more sickness, no more death. Why? Because sin, the virus on the earth, is going to be put out, eradicated. And that man of sin is going to be swallowed up through Yahweh Shai, who's coming back, traveling in the greatness of his glory. So the, the disease or the virus of the earth sin, which includes the man of sin, is going to be swallowed up. See, the overflowing scourge of the fountains of living waters is going to cleanse the earth and plant an everlasting garden that shall never fade away, but it's going to continue to reproduce more fruit, more branches, and more springs of rivers. Or the GMS Spiritual Art 144, Revelation 7 and 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Beautiful. We're going to feed on the mountain of Sharon, the kingdom. We'll never thirst again, never hunger again, never be famished or suffer famine again. We're going to be fattened up as the calves of the stall being fed plenteously occupying a beautiful garden a new kingdom planted under Jacob under our king Yahushai the fountain of life the way, the truth, and the life I'm Yasharala and abide the Bible an oasis a beautiful oasis is being built in the dry desert, a valley of the shadow of death, and the tabernacle of David is being raised up from the ashes, from the dry bones, and springing forth to life. Pham Yasharala and the Bible Babao. Baraka Thumb. We got next, Lord Willem. See you on the next lesson, Lord Willem. Shalom. More praises to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work, helping to edify the body and feed the lambs of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Much love to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David, following this wise counsel in meekness and humility. We got next, Lord Willem. Maraka Thumb, Maraka Thumb, Kwame Asherala, DTA, Abad Babao, Shalom.